What is up guys, JPR Tech here, and today I'm back at it again with another video. This time is a tutorial. We wanna learn how to edit the Canon ESM RAW files very efficiently and to squeeze out the quality out of this camera. But of course, as you all know, Magic Lantern shoots in a very proprietary codec that no software can read only the MLV app. As you know, in my channel, I did have a video on how I edit in MLV to export to DaVinci. But since then, my workflow changed a little bit. It actually simplified. In just a couple of clicks, you are done. All you gotta do is import the footage and export. That's it. That's all I do. But I do have my MLV app in with two settings that are very important. One is I like to export in DNG. I know we got ProRes and some other codec, but DNG, I, I really compared a lot. ProRes, HQ, LT, Proxy, and even the 444. I've tried them all, and DNG just edits better in DaVinci Resolve, and the files are a little bit smaller, and they export so fast in the MLV app. So just trust me, stick with the DNG. Now, it's a coin toss between lossless and fast pass. I personally can't tell the difference between the two. I did notice that the fast pass clips are a little bit larger than lossless, which actually I would think is the opposite, the contrary. I don't know, but if anyone knows, please let me know in the comment section down below. But as of me, we're just gonna stick with lossless because that's what's been working with me so far. So that's it, just make sure you have DNG coded, lossless, and make sure that your exporting setting is at DaVinci, um, I, I think it's called DaVinci Resolve Naming Scheme. You wanna make sure that your folder system is with the DaVinci Resolve Naming Scheme, that way DaVinci could see all your folders as a media clip. All right, so let's go ahead. You got all your stuff exported, great. Let's open up DaVinci and see what we do next. Quick disclaimer guys, before we do open up the Benchy, I'm editing the project right now that um, you're watching on right now. Future me here in the editor, hello. Um, I just wanna let you know a disclaimer, very important disclaimer is that I am not a colorist. I'm not a professional uh, filmmaker, Da Vinci pro teacher, professor, whatever. I'm not none of that. I'm just an enthusiast. I love filming, I love, uh, playing with raw files, the DNGs with the Canon EOS M. Um, I even use DaVinci a lot for the um, S-Log and in my Sony A7S, for my Fujifilm X-H1 and the F-Log. Just, I'm an enthusiast. So if this, the tutorial I'm about to show you is just my personal workflow, what works for me, I'm still experimenting, I'm still tweaking here and there, but if this workflow that I'm about to show you works out great for you, if it meets the needs in your workflow, and if it does, I would appreciate a thumbs up and share. So with that said, let's head over to DaVinci and get started. All right, so to get started, let's start with our quick fix. Really easy, just head over to your clip, and I have two of the same clip because right here I have the the just slapping on a lot and we're done with the clip, kind of edit. And then next to that, we're gonna do the CST with a few nodes and we'll go from there. So let's do the quick fix first. Head over to your camera raw settings in the color space down by the decode using, you wanna switch over to clip. And then under color space, change that to black magic design, which automatically converts your gamma into black magic design film and as you can see in the screen it looks very log like and that's what we want we want a nice flat image next thing you want to do is head over to your node right click it and uh, we're going to go to our lots you could add any of the free lots that come with uh, davinci resolve or you could just use your own lot and my personal favorite is Yep, Utopia. That's what basically 99% of my videos are all with the Utopia lot. And look at that, it looks really beautiful. Beautiful colors, just Utopia is just amazing. Anyway, we're almost done with the clip. This is the quick fix. All we gotta do is just fix the exposure 
and we're pretty much done with this clip. Now this day was a little bit overcast, so it's a little bit underexposed. Everything is kind of plain. Uh, the sky was really blown out, but you know, we don't have control over the weather, but we do have control over these DNG lossless files. And look at that. I think this is pretty good. We're gonna call this a day. I'm just gonna boost up a little bit of contrast, cool down the image a little bit. I love my greens nice and vibrant. And, uh, Yeah, that's about it. Once you have the image to the way you like it, you wanna save this in a preset or in a memory. So in Mac, just hit the option and any number in your keyboard will save that as a preset. So if I go option one, it saves this as a preset. So any other clip I grab, I hit option one and it's gonna do that. It's gonna transfer all the whole edit that we just did. One more thing I wanna do before I go is on the quick fix, just add a little bit of sharpening. So I usually go around 40 to 50. So let's just stick with 40 right now. There we go, we got 40. Again, I'm gonna hit option one and save it. We're pretty much done with this clip. Um, in some clips, it depends on the clip. For example, this clip here is a little bit overexposed on the highlights. So you wanna cut down on the highlights and increase our shadows a little bit. You get the main point here using um, just a lot as a foundation and then we just fix the exposure as needed. So that's how we do the quick fix. So up next, let's get ready for the CST and the color space transform. So we're gonna head over to the clip next to this. So this is our first clip. This is just the Phantom Utopia Lant. We head over to the next to that is a CST one. And again, this is straight raw from scratch. So we're gonna go over to our nodes and this is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's just add a bunch of nodes. So hit option S a few times. I like to add about seven nodes and then I'll delete the ones I don't need, but I'll explain why. And we're gonna organize our node tree really quick so it's easy to understand. I like to keep my CST nodes on the top at the bottom. Then I have three that control exposure and color in the center. And then I have the other auxiliary edits are below that. So for example, let's name these. So let's label our top one to CST. Then we have next to that is our exposure. And following that, we want the white balance. And next to that is the saturation. Now the reason why we separated all these individual edits is because it's very flexible. When we head over to another clip, if there's something else that we have to edit, we can just edit individually those particular aspects of the clip. We don't have to worry about ruining any other, um, any other nodes. So that's the cool thing about nodes. You we could view them as layers in Photoshop. And then after we got saturation, auxiliary ones, we got the sharpness, definitely. We gotta add some of that. And then another one is the CA, the chromatic aberration, the demore. I made a video before showing you how to remove it for free here in DaVinci, but on this day, all my clips, most of them didn't have any more whatsoever. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're not gonna need those parallel nodes that I usually have. But I believe that's about it. That's all we need. Oh no, no, we need the most important one is, you gotta make sure that, well, the second to last before the CST, make sure you add the lot there. So this is where a lot is gonna go. And last but not least is another CST, color space transform. So we have a couple here extras that we don't need. And there you go. That's our node tree we're gonna work with. So let's head over to the top, CST, and if you have your effects tab, if you don't see it, just hit FX on the top here and it brings up all the effects we have available. Color Space Transform, or in short, CST. Drag it over, slap it on top of the first node and we head back to the library and drag another one on top of the bottom node. Now we have a node on the bottom and the top. So on the top, we're gonna head over to Color Space and 
the name of the game is Da Vinci. Just select anything that has Da Vinci. So we have Da Vinci White Gamut. We head over to our actual gamut. We want to select Intermediate. And it's going to look really funky, right? But don't worry, we'll keep selecting all the Da Vinci ones. For the color space, we got White Gamut. And then the timeline, the out, output gamma, we want to make sure it's Da Vinci Intermediate. So then we're going to head over to the bottom one and just slap the lot in and see how everything affects the lot. So again, we're going to select the same lot I selected before. After the, we apply the lot, it's going to be very punchy and colorful. I know it's too strong. So we head over, we're going to go to our last CST and we're going to do the same thing. The input color, we're going to select Da Vinci White Gamma. Our input gamma is going to be design, where is it? Da Vinci Intermediate. Our color space is going to be white gamut. And actually for the output gamma, we want to output to 709. So select 709A. And it's going to be pretty nasty looking, right? Don't worry about it. We're going to fix this now. Heading over back to our lot. So head over to the lot node. Go over to your key settings down here below, below the clips, you're going to have a few settings and head over to the key, the key output. We're going to lower it to say 0.4, 40% strength. And look at that. It's looking really nice. And now we can play with all the exposure white balance and why not. So we head over to our exposure. Now there are a few ways you could do this. You could use the camera raw settings or you can use the color wheels, the primaries, whatever you want, you can use to edit the exposure, white balance and saturation. So let me show you really quick using just the color wheels. And of course we gotta lower our saturation. So we head over to the saturation and let's just lower that right off the bat. We go over to like 30 or 40%. There we go, it's looking really nice. We head over to our white balance, and again, you could use the temp and tint to control that, or we can use the offset wheel. So we head over to the offset, and if you wanna warm it up, head over to the yellows and the greens, but we wanna stay cool, so let's go down towards the greens and the blues. There we go, it's looking really nice. But you know what, it's still too punchy, so I wanna head over to the exposure, we're gonna lower the highlights a little bit. It's just a little bit too punchy for my taste. And the saturation again is really punchy. Lower it down to like 30%. And there you go. We have ourselves pretty clean image. It's a little bit dark, so again, head back to the exposure. I prefer using the wheels over the curve. I don't know, I'm just used to that. I like the results better using the wheels. But anyway, here we go. All right, so we're gonna save this to a preset too. Now, here we have it. Our CST with one, two, three, four, five, six, well, seven nodes technically, okay? So we have seven nodes and the lot, Utopia. So if we head over and compare that to the first clip, this is the first clip and this is the second clip. So the first clip, second clip. It's a huge difference, right? Um, still think it's too saturated, too punchy. So let's, all right guys, so here we are. We have everything set up. Last thing we gotta do is just add a sharpening. So we head over to the sharpness and uh, there are a couple ways to do this. Heading over to our blur setting, which actually sharpening and blur does the thing, same thing for me. I don't notice any difference. Just go over to the radius, lower it to like 47, and there you go. We have ourselves sharpened image. So let's see this in full screen, how it looks. This is the just the LUT with some basic edits, and this is with the CST definitely you see a huge difference in colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make things fair and edit this one so that it's nice and punchy like the other one. There we go. So now it's a little bit fair. So this is the LUNT with basic raw set, uh, 
settings and this is the CST with the lot. So this is the what's limiting about just using the lot. As you can see, it just limits heavily what we can do with the colors. But um, yeah, definitely CST is what I would recommend to you guys. But if you don't have the time to edit, this looks perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and finish all the clips, the B-roll clips, and let's check out the sequence. And you tell me which one you like better, the Phantom Gamma or the CST. So guys, what do you guys think about editing the Canon EOS M raw footage in DaVinci Resolve? I know it was a little bit long. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end, but I just had to show you my two methods. Now, the first one was very easy. It's a lot quicker doing it than explaining it, how to do it. So basically all you have to do is just slap on the Blackmagic Design Film color space or the gamma into your clip, slap on the lot and fix the exposure. That's a quick fix to do it. Now the CST did pull out a lot more details. It, it was just so much in depth edit that it just brought out the quality of shooting in DNG raw. So if you guys found this video useful, helpful in any way, I would appreciate your feedback, letting me know what you thought, if you have any questions. And also if you did enjoy, if you found it helpful, smashing that like button and sharing. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys on the next one. Happy shooting.